Hey everyone, welcome to Surf Soon, a numerically rated Surfcraft review series. If you dig this episode, please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Now let's get to the show. In this episode, I'll be reviewing a 7 foot 2 plus 1 outlier by CJ Nelson and Thunderbolt Red Technology. After the success of the longer length outliers, CJ and shaper Ryan Ingle went back to the drawing board to design a shorter and wider version. While the longer version excels in larger surf, this version is designed to surf great in less than perfect waves. The outline screams convex, but let's get a closer look. The rocker is in the traditional whole family, with almost all the rocker in the nose and a little in the tail for directional change. The nose has a foiled up rail, meeting a thicker yet almost low performance rail and the tail is a down rail, meeting hard edge 30 inches up from the tail. Bottom has a hull entry to slightly flat in the midsection with a touch of V in front of the fin and flat behind the fin. This episode is presented by Farrah Board Bags. Based out of San Diego, Farrah has the answer to anyone with several boards and no covers. Their brand ethos is durability, sustainability, and adjustability. Our favorite feature of these bags is that they can fit any length longboard easily and securely. As a bonus to our disorganized surfers, they developed the Traveler Fin Wallet. This 10 by 11 inch wallet is an easy answer for everyday surf, travel, and adventure. All Ferro products are handmade in the USA, and they're given back 1% of the sales to the Palos Verdes Kelp Restoration Project. All right, so first thoughts. If you know me, you know I had to try this thing, and uh, I was very surprised with how big it actually is, how thick the rails are, this hard edge that's starting 30 inches above the tail. Now, this is a normal hole for a lot of other people, and you can see it is way more pinched, a little bit more flat, and there is no hard edge in the tail at all. So. To go from something like that to something like this, I will say it's going to be a shocker and it's going to be a lot to take in. But let's get to categories. Okay, for maneuver, I gave an 8.5. And this is really where it starts to kind of change the whole game as far as a regular displacement hull to what CJ's come up with here. Hard edge starting way, way far up. Little side bites really just help create more of a fluid turn in general and also initiate a turn way better. I found this thing surfed very, very smooth, very, very almost smaller for its size. I think the Thunderbolt Red really helps as far as the flex patterns and also helps as far as weight making this feel not as big as it actually is. Drive, I gave it a nine. Um, insane drive. I haven't felt a board with drive like this in a long time. I felt it in the bottom turns just coming off and coming off with a lot of speed and just coming all the way up to almost an 11 o'clock position. I've never done that with a seven foot board. That's something that I kind of have only done with almost mini Simmons style boards and actually this feels a lot like a mini Simmons. Mini Simmons boards are hydrodynamic. They have their fins set all the way far back so there's tons of drive and I think the combination of the hard edge, side fin, single fin, all of those edges and just grip and just propulsion just gives this board a ton of drive, super fun, stoked. Trim, I gave it an eight. Connected sections with the low effort and also fast in the pocket, but in the flats, it needs a little help. It will continue to move, but goes a little slow. And that kind of reminds me a lot of how a mini Simmons, hate to bring it back up again, but a mini Simmons kind of works. They need a little bit more of that pocket and they will go through the flats, but they go a little slow, but it will connect you, but there's not that, that longer rail line to kind of push you through like other mid lengths. Um, and of course, 
it kind of feels like a hull. And that's where you kind of get that hully feel in the trim section, especially in one of the steeper parts of the waves. You'll feel those feels in this board for sure. Volume distribution and duck dive, I gave it a 7.5. In general, it's a lot of boards. It's a, it's a high volume seven foot board. So it is a lot of surface area, but it does really go super duper fast. And it goes fast in about 90% of the wave. It just needs that power from the wave and it will blow through sections. I did find that it had this familiar sweet spot right around here which is super familiar with a hull. So if you're a hull rider, you will find that super cool. Uh, the only thing that I didn't really dig as far as the volume is the amount of width in the tail. And the reason why is it kind of sucks for surfing backside. It really makes it hard to do the pivot turn backside. And maybe it was just the way that I was surfing it, but I just had a little bit of an issue with that. As far as duck diving, I was pretty surprised that I was able to duck dive it, but six waves out of 10, I kind of had to ditch the board and go under it. Paddling, I gave a 7.25. Although it's high volume and it is still a hole, it is just pushing water. I found that the best place to kind of paddle is to have your chest right around here. I found that for me, I was able to paddle the fastest there and not be a little worried to nosedive. Um, I will say that it does paddle better than most other holes and I think that has to do with the hard edge and also it being a kind of two plus one setup and also the Thunderbolt Red technology. It definitely has a different buoyancy to it and it paddles really, really quick once it's up and going, and it drops into waves really fast, which was awesome. Special moments, I gave an 8.75. I really like mini Simmons boards, and I really like hulls, but unfortunately on the East Coast of New Jersey, they are not the most reliable board to have. So it was kind of cool to almost have a board like this because it's almost like a mashup of both of them. It has those holy feels, but it also has that drive of a Simmons. And I was surprised at how fluid the turns that it was making. I was really surprised at how small it felt when it was surfing. And for the most part, as a whole, it paddled pretty well. Um, but I will never forget the amount of drive that this board has. I was super impressed with that. And that kind of makes it completely different than any other hole that I've ever had. As far as fins go, I went with the Skylimit 3.5 and this is the Performance 8 center fin. They are both very stiff and I feel like that's also where I got a lot of the drive. Um, luckily, this was something that I just kind of randomly picked off of the Flying Diamonds website, and it's actually what CJ suggests for this particular board. Um, I also grabbed a, this is the Parallax 9.5, and this is also suggested to try as a straight single, but I'll be honest with you, I really feel like this board is meant to ride as a two plus one. And I think that that's kind of where it excels. I think that's where it gives all that drive. And I like the idea of riding a board like this as a single, but I really like the idea, especially when he put hard edge all the way this far up, you know he wants this thing to turn. So. Why run it with a single fin? That's just my thought. All right, so final thoughts. This board is advertised as a groveler, and I'll be honest with you, I think it can hold up in bigger surf a little bit better. I think that when I think of a groveler, I think of that day that I should probably have a long board out and I think that this board is something where when it's like shoulder to head high and maybe a little pitchy, 
I think this is a great board. It's super fast. And I think to use this as a groveler, I think you're still just not giving it enough justice. Will it work? Absolutely. But I think this board kind of wants to get into some heavy stuff. And I think that's where it excels. Thank you everyone for tuning in. If you like this episode, please hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Feel free to share, comment, and all that good stuff. Until next time, there are always waves on the way. So hang tight, surf soon. A great way to support the show even further is to grab some of our limited edition apparel. All of our apparel is designed and printed in-house by us at Surfcraft Union. To purchase, you can visit our website at www.surfcraftunion.com.